Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. By now, most of you would have received your salary for January 2023. Are you happy with the taxes that has basically taken one third of your salary? Are you thinking, how on earth are you going to live in the coming months? Obviously, you may have to cut down on many things that brought some joy to the life that you have right now. Sometimes you may have to drastically move towards a new setting to afford this new reality. Perhaps you may have to change houses because the current rent is way too much for you to afford after the new taxes. To look at how we got to this debacle with the pay tax, we need to look at the source and follow in our footsteps from that point on. The IMF agenda to push harsh, harsh taxes wasn't a novel idea. It was exposed through the staff agreement uh, um, with the IMF announced in September of 2022, last year. Now, before Gotabe Rajapaksa's tenure, there was another program in the works with the IMF from 2016, pushing for the same policies that are being implemented right now. Remember the period from 2015 to 2019 where you uh, even had to, when you were withdrawing your own money from your own bank account, you were taxed five rupees. Remember the best finance minister in Asia? Yes, those were the hearty and handy works of the IMF. Liberals, remember your Lord and Savior, Dr. Harsha De Silva, coming on television to say, well, nothing much we can do. We are taxing more to pay the debt. <laughs> Well, that was uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva during the time when they were in power, I think, uh, from 2015 to 2019 in the UNF government. Now, as a nation, we forget, don't we, in 2023, that, the Shri that is the Sri Lankan way. Since Sri Lanka is considered to be a high-risk country due to the Hail Mary move to default by the hero of the Colombo Twitter liberals, Professor Albus Dumbledore of the Central Bank, the IMF is positioned better to dictate more intrusive and backward policies, giving Sri Lanka fewer choices to negotiate. The IMF is using its traditional playbook, and we are dancing to its tune, at the expense of a general public with no reason to suffer on this scale. The solutions they used during that time resulted in the crippling of the SME sector, reduction of our production, and recorded one of the lowest GDP growth rates ever witnessed in this country, in our history. I'm not making this up. This really happened back in the period from 2015 to 2019. Do your own research. Don't believe what I'm saying. Look at what happened when these particular policies, when they were implemented from 2015 to 2019, what happened to this country? Now, all this push, be it the pay tax or the personal income tax, is made to force Sri Lanka into having a budget surplus. However, a budget deficit is not something you need to Sri Lanka alone. It is something that almost all countries worldwide undergo, even America. Now, the current budget deficit in 2022, I, I think, is around $82 billion. Now, if you are one of those people who earn about, let's say, 200000 a month, you are considered in the middle income category. However, now, after the tax cuts, paying off loans, paying hefty prices at the supermarket and all other touch points where you might have to engage financially will result in only around 10 to 20,000 remaining as savings for you and your family or let's say for a, even for an emergency. Even that number, 10,000 or 20,000 is a high estimate. Mind you, this is after taking massive cuts and perks of what you were used to in that category. In the long run, these taxes will shrink the middle class sector, push most of them to the low income uh, families category and push more towards welfare. The shrinking of the middle class will result in a multitude of problems. Apart from the obvious issue of a reduction in disposable income, the borrowing rates will heighten and there will be visible frustration with the people, pushing the rise in domestic crime meaning stealing and looting will be something of an option for people who don't have anything. We will see an increase in a lot of petty theft. It's already happening. It'll increase. 
That is a dangerous situation for everyone who believe in a peaceful society. Again, we don't have to look beyond. Look back at 2022. Well, what do you think? Are you okay with these taxes? Well, this is what some of you had to say. Salary employees have been taxed from 6 to 36 percent based on their salaries. Ultimately, their take-home salary have been reduced uh, drastically and it will badly affect their standard of living. Personally, I feel because I have elderly and children dependents. So, uh, these taxes I can't tolerate. Indirect taxes, we pay at the moment, we pay a lot of indirect tax taxes. So, that is also we have to pay and direct taxes also presently we have to pay. So, I think this is very, very unfair. In terms of distances, we will have to fight really hard for our survival. This is in view of the exorbitant taxation and the higher interest rates prevailing in this country. Pay tax imposed on the interest income. We are affected. We are very much affected by the interest income because income groups like us are not entitled for a pension scheme nor a provided fund. Therefore, we are very much dependent on the interest income for our return. Uh, definitely, business community will effect very adversely and uh, what we earn has to pay uh, bank as, as taxes and uh, ended up with nothing for us. So I think most of the business people will leave the country uh, looking for better place for their business. Because of this, those reasons, especially most of the manufacturer now thinking to moving from Sri Lanka to outside. Some some people going to going to their uh, industry to Middle East. Some people may Bangladesh and other places, especially garment industry and polymer manufacturer, compound manufacturer. A uh, lot of people moving uh, from country to Sri Lanka to outside to uh, move their industry. So it is a very tough time to Sri Lanka manufacturers, so that's why we are requesting the government uh, reconsider the, about the taxes and do some uh, some opportunity to, to survive the local SM industry. Bank interest rates are going uh, up and actually uh, especially com uh, commodity prices are skyrocketing. Therefore, actually we have uh, this meager income, actually we have to uh, maintain our uh, lifestyle uh, according to the uh, some kind of standard. So therefore, actually, I am uh, uh, speaking on behalf of the professionals actually to uh, reduce this uh, tax uh, from the government. We have to educate our children also. That expenditure has also gone up. Uh, due to that, these reasons, we are in uh, very uh, big difficulties. We have to face uh, so many difficulties. Taxation is going to be placed on the very first stage of the uh, the salary and uh, after all taxation and the loans and all this stuff uh, went on if you get uh, very less amount or uh, the amount which is not going to be sufficient to feed your family it's going to be a huge problem and uh, I think uh, that will cause many problems among the society and a lot of people I know uh, are thinking about maybe migrating or going abroad. Well, those were some of your views. Now, to understand whether these taxes would help the country or not, earlier I spoke to former finance minister Dr. Sarath Amrugama. This is what he said, listening. There is only one way forward and that is to increase productivity and cut down expenditure. Because one, one part of our economy is that it is a foreign exchange crisis. You know, all those areas that brought us foreign exchange. So that can be uh, circumvented only by en enhancing those areas that brought us revenues. Tourism now is on the upswing. That is a very good sign. We have to enhance foreign remittances. And especially, we have to help the private sector to do a much more export-oriented, much more productive type of operation so that the country will get that type of foreign exchange and then we can, in the first step, go about those vital necessities like power, like transport, like health, like education. All those vital sectors 
can be financed and equally uh, what was disastrously mismanaged previously is that we must improve our agriculture so that at least food security for our people can be ensured. Well, that was uh, Dr. Sarath Amunugama, um, no, former finance minister, I think during uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa's time and also uh, beyond. Uh, he was uh, very much involved in our economic affairs and that's what he thinks. All right, uh, let's get an idea as to how much of an impact these taxes would have on your salary. And for that, let's uh, go to Danidu Itarama. I'm standing by at the data board. Good to see you once again, Danidu. Uh, it seems like that you're standing in front of a board which says uh, salary LKR. Hundred thousand is this? Are, are you trying to tell the people that's how much you get? Uh, I think it's better not to come in. I will. I will exercise my right of being silent in this instance, uh, since I have to have this conversation with my boss. Uh, but my, uh, unfortunately, as uh, usual on the data board, uh, I don't think we'll have to share a lot of positive stories. And I think I look forward to even you would look forward to when I could come here and share something positive. Now, in today's case, what we are going to focus on, just to swiftly get into the numbers, is a person that receives a salary of 100,000 rupees. Now, this is considered to be the middle income category, or was considered to be the middle income category. I believe you'll explain further about what's going to happen to this middle class, the so-called middle class, in the future with the taxes to come. Now, I think uh, usually, Mahesh, you're not someone who is uh, new to complaints. You'll probably get a complaint on this segment saying the numbers that we have given are conservative estimates because I have gone for the best case scenario giving the benefit of the doubt for the government or those agencies and to see with 100,000 what is the capacity for a person in this middle class to survive. Now, we're going to look at a few obvious expenses like the payee tax which, which will have the reduction coming down to 94,000. Then there will be the EPF, the things that are generally considered. Now these are calculated based on the basic salary of 100,000, not, not with any other additions. Which will then bring it down to 86,000, what you can use as disposable income. Within what we looked at when it comes to rent, I believe a lot of people, I can hear them complaining, 20,000 will not be the number, it will be much higher. But let's just say you are living within the outskirts of Colombo, that you are paying a rent of 20,000, bringing your, uh, the total disposable income to 66,000. Food, again, a very conservative estimate of 15,000. The government has uh, put the mark, landmark, the figure between 10,000 to 11,000, but let's just say 15,000. Bringing it down to 51,000, your disposable income. Electricity, now this was calculated based on, Mahesh, I think we did an entire segment on this as well, calculating the new tariffs, based on new tariffs, what the electricity would look like. Again, for a four member household, we are expecting it to come to a range of between 4,000. Bringing your disposable income to 47,000. Then water. Now, much the calculation for water happens with 13.5 rupees per cubic meter of water with a service charge of 300 rupees. Based on that calculation, we are looking at a rough figure of 15, 000, uh, 1,500 or 2,000 rupees, bringing your disposable income to 45,500. Then a one cylinder of gas, again, for four people, we are estimating 12.5 kilogram uh, gas cylinder would be sufficient for one month. So monthly expense of 4,400, bring your disposable income to 41,100. We are expecting this specific category of people to be driving in the car, but expectation of public transport can also bring it roughly at a minimum of 1,600, calculating the minimum bus fares for the outs outskirts of Colombo, bringing your disposable income to 33,700. Now in this case, just taking those specific segments, Mahesh, we see the value remaining at 33,700. But you'll ask me the question, anyone would ask me the question, are these the only things that people spend their money on? I'm leaving out a lot of things. For, uh, just, to, just to include a few, if we take a car lease, for example, this is a car lease for a vehicle that's, a, that's 15 lakhs, 1.5 million. This is actually a very, very conservative estimate yeah. about how much you have to pay per month, between 50 to 30. For housing load, if there is an expectation, people build a family, they want to build a house. We're expecting a monthly payment of 30,000. This is re removing the 30% charge that you have to pay up front, the 70% that you pay over, over a certain period of time. Now, the housing loan I actually calculated for 1 million rupees, which is definitely not the case. People go for something higher. Exactly. If you do calculate these two, leaving out entertainment, leaving out savings, leaving out education, leaving out healthcare. What that entertainment, payments. right? <laughs> leaving out all of those aspects, we'll actually have a negative value that will come out. So 
I think Mahesh, you'll have to discuss this on a political and social aspect, how people are going to survive, how the middle class is going to survive. I know it's a little bit elitist of me to just talk about 100,000 salary because people, the, there's a majority of people below that. We saw exactly. that over 500,000 fell below the poverty line due to the COVID measures. So just to look at this demographic that watches our program, mm -hmm. they are finding it difficult. Over to you, Mahesh. Indeed, uh, that is that, that, that's a very well thought of the, uh, segment that you just did, uh, just to g give our viewers, even the authorities, I don't know, uh, recently I saw a tweet uh, which said that apparently a very elitist category in our society, I don't want to say uh, which, which sector, apparently they have gone into the courts asking not to collect uh, income tax or pay tax from them right. because i don't know i, I think they get uh, somewhere around 500000 rupees uh, um, from from um, I, I, as I a mean, basic salary yeah exactly uh, that's a very comfortable salary and and yet they went to courts and apparently the courts have said that not to do it or not uh, I, I mean like there are a lot of things that we really need to think about. It is not about, uh, I don't understand why the government is so hell-bent on being IMF worthy, but apparently that's the drive the government is going on. And, and right now you just broke down to showcase what kind of uh, misery uh, that most of these people, the middle income class has to go through. Dhani uh, Dutta Nwasam at the data board. Thank you very much. Let's dive deep into this story. And for that, uh, joining me now is Professor at the California Institute of Integral Studies, Professor Asuka Bandarage. Professor, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. And I understand that you are here in Sri Lanka from the US for a very short visit. And it's an, a real honor to speak to you. Uh, Professor, recently an increase in income taxes was implemented. Uh, we've, we've been talking about that entire thing right now. Uh, now the first round of taxes went through this month and most of the middle class is feeling the pain. Now it's evident that unfair taxes like this, which don't think about the people of uh, Sri Lanka, but just the goal the government wants to achieve, pushed by the need to be IMF worthy, uh, nation. Professor, do you believe this sourness would push people towards another unrest like what we saw back in 2022? Yeah, first of all, Mahish, thank you very much for having me on your show. Really appreciate it. Yes, I think it's hard to predict the future, of course, but we already see people demonstrating and resisting against these new uh, tax policies. So they are likely to intensify if there aren't uh, uh, breaks uh, given to people. Uh, the austerity program is already underway and people are feeling uh, the weight of it. And it is the, uh, the lower classes, the middle classes and the poor who have to bear the brunt of this. And I think it's important to have a broader perspective on the differential effects of taxation on different classes of people. And in this regard, we have to remember the great income disparities in Sri Lanka. For example, the World Inequality Database points out that the top 1% in Sri Lanka uh, control 31% uh, of personal wealth, whereas the bottom 50% has only uh, they have access only to about less than 4% of uh, all wealth. So that in itself you know, shows the vast uh, disparities that could only grow with uh, unjust uh, taxation policies and IMF-led uh, social service cutbacks and so on. So, uh, you know, it's very uh, commonly known that IMF uh, austerity and restructuring programs have led to so-called IMF riots around the world. So this is not just a phenomenon that is pe peculiar to Sri Lanka. Uh, with so many other countries in debt crises, we are going to see this uh, across the world. Absolutely. Uh, makes a lot of sense. And now, Professor, in the Colombo liberal clown circles, there is this insane delusion being entertained that homegrown solutions for a crisis like this will never work. But it will always be the IMF, Deyo and Western gods that will solve all problems of Sri Lanka. What do you think about that? 
Yeah, I think it's a very superficial and a, a misled policy. The minds have uh, most people, particularly uh, the so-called liberal middle classes, have been so deeply conditioned that they cannot think outside of the box, so to speak, of uh, economic fundamentalism, which is the neoliberal economic policies um, of privatization, of market-led growth. And I think if we are really talking about uh, solutions beyond the IMF bailout, we do have to think of uh, all that money that is uh, sitting outside of the country, the illicit flows of funds, uh, particularly from that top 1% who are also tax evaders and who are responsible for the outflow of illicit uh, funds abroad that are in you know offshore tax havens and banks that needs to be brought back to the country through an amendment of the uh, foreign exchange control act which is you know extremely important because that money that is uh, out there is far greater than the 2.9 uh, billion uh, from the uh, estimated from the uh, imf understood uh, professor what kind of advice would you give to Sri Lankans undergoing these severe hardships? Yeah, you know, um, I have a publication coming out on this uh, topic, and what I'm showing is that uh, this is a global uh, uh, crisis. Um, there are close to 60 low and middle income countries in debt crisis or near debt crisis. So, so there is a global discourse on moving away from the neoliberal model that the IMF is pushing to something that is much more sustainable, uh, a, a greater global discourse which is unfortunately absent in Sri Lanka, a discourse that calls for um, local self-sufficiency, local agriculture, local production, uh, and moving away from this extreme dependence on imports and exports, which is the legacy of colonialism. Uh, and in this regard, I think, you know, ultimately it calls for a change in thinking, thinking outside of the box, so to speak, and moving towards more collective ways of approaching these issues. Because what we have now is a model that upholds individualism, uh, extreme privatization and competition. And there is a global discourse on a transition to a more collective, more ecological way of living on the planet and sharing resources. And I think the tax issue also bears uh, into that. So I think we need more of uh, a transformation of consciousness in order to have change in uh, economic policies. A lot of valuable information. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was Professor at the California Institute for Integral Studies, Dr. Ashoka Bandarage. Uh, this is State of the Nation. We will take a short commercial break. Back in a moment.